Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today we want to talk about records and patterns and how you can make the most out of them. And now without further ado, let's get starting. All right, so let's talk about records, the new data type that has been introduced with Dart 3, the newest version and with a lot of feature requests because this records changes a lot of things inside of the programming world of Dart. And yeah, well, records are anonymous, immutable and aggregated. But what does that mean? Well, let's start with anonymous. You can pass them in variables and they don't have an own name and uh, not like classes, for example. So that gives us the option to pass them in variables, like you see in this example. Here you can directly see the new syntax where you have the parentheses instead of anything else around the record. You enclose your values by these parentheses. Also, you can see the declaration which contains the types of the values in this round parenthesis. Immutable for records mean that the object cannot be changed after it has been initialized. That being said is you can overwrite them like we did in the example above, but you cannot uh, change a value inside of that. So if you would access, like we see in the next example, um, if you would access one of the identifiers and would change the value there, you get an error. But if you overwrite it, you are fine. Last but not least, records are aggregated, which means they are a collection of different elements at the end. So in our case, thanks to the records possibility, all of them are strongly typed and you can mix up all different kinds of op uh, elements inside of it. These new records can now be used to pass into function, declare variables, use them wherever you want to create tuples and things like that, which is already great. But is that everything? Well, that is actually most of it what records are. It's just a new data type. Don't be too afraid of it, that's fine. But the real magic happens as soon as you start to implement the pattern matching, because there comes things like deconstruction into place that we want to take a look into next. When a function returns a record, you can directly deconstruct it and use its values from the consumer side. Let's assume we have the following method, where we get the midpoint in between two points. So as you can see, it is quite complex, but we will change that in a second. So first things first, let's recognize the type of the record. It's a double X and double Y, it is a point. So to make that a little bit easier and to read and understand, let's create a type definition for point and pass in the record type. And with this, we can now replace the records in the function with our new type definition. Fantastic. And it looks way easier. So we have a point that we return and we pass in two points. If we do that, we can take the calculation. And because you maybe saw already the curly brackets here, that is named parameters. That allows us to give the, every parameter inside of the record an own name. In that case, it's X and Y, so we can directly access them without this nice little dollar sign and one. Great, much better readability. But wait, you will say now, hey, why should I do that anyway? I mean, we had already the offset class, we had already the point class, and there lies a little bit the issue. Do you understand? If there are like two classes for the same thing, offset and point, is that a good pattern? It seems that we need something different and records exactly solve that in an easier way. But uh, back to the topic, deconstruction. Let us check the consumer side for this function. As you can see, we get here the midpoint between two points, which gives into a result and we can directly print it. That's nice. So there is no deconstruction happening. It's just a variable record that we receive from the return type and pass into result. So nothing special, but we can simplify that. We can just execute with this colon annotation and then X, we assign a new variable from the old variable like X into X and we can use this value now directly inside of our print method. So with this deconstruction, we can way easier access the variables inside of results from a function, but also from classes. We will see that in a second. Now here you can see the deconstruction, the names of the records into variables and make them directly accessible. The colon in front allows the usage immediately. If we would return a record only with types in the uh, distance between two point method, we would not need the columns. That is the reason because we immediately pass back just two types. And if we pass two, two types back, we don't declare variables, we create them fresh. 
So these variables are new because the named parameters are not inside of the record. But what happens if we don't like the names that we get returned? If we don't like x and y, but we would like to rather call them mid x and mid y because they fit more. Well, thanks to the Collins naming convention, we can now write in front the value where we want to get it from. So x in our case. And after the column, we pass in the variable name that we want to declare as a consumer. In our case, met x. Great, if we do that, we can directly access the variables again and we make them way more readable. That could be beneficial if you have already an x variable defined above and you don't want to override it. Or if you want to um, yeah, just rename it into something more sophisticated. That is fantastic and in my opinion, extremely useful. And the great thing is that you can also read attributes and from classes with the record. I just told you that before, but now let's have a look into it. So in this example, we create a class sausage and this sausage cal has calories and they has a name with a constructor, very basic and an object for more additional information. So we create this sausage. It's a Cavalat, it's a Swiss sausage in this case with, I promise you, it has more than 500 kilocalories, but let's take that for now. And we can now declare a variable with a deconstructor where we say we want to get from this sausage the kilocalories, we rename the parameter to kc, and we want to receive the name. So also a mixture between the read, um, read assignment of the variable as well as the reusable of the name is possible. All right, and if we now print that, we can very easily see that we can access directly the name and the kilocalories with the variable names that we passed into, and that works perfectly. Another pattern matching that I enjoy a lot is the swap possibility. Let's switch again to our first function where we created the midpoint, you remember, from two things. And now let's say we want to swap the points around. So we get a midpoint and this midpoint we want now to swap on the car. So on our consumer side, we receive the midpoint, mid X and mid Y, and now we want to swap them. So we take a, a mid Y, comma, a comma, mid X in our record and say that is equal to mid X and mid Y. And what it does now, it replaces the, um, the numbers and swaps them over so you get directly the right record. Thanks to that, we don't have to initialize a new variable or anything like that. We can directly use it out of the box. I like that. <laughs> ah, and one more thing. If you get a variable that you don't need in your function, there is a good option to get rid of it. And that is the underscore. It means you don't want to get this uh, deconstructed value and you don't want to use it. Quite easy, simple and effective. But the coolest thing about pattern matching is that it is not limited to records. No, no, no. Pattern matching works on all kinds of different types in Dart. From list maps to the newest edition switch expression, which is a complete new way of defining switch statements. Maybe an upcoming video. If you like this video, that video will be probably the next one that I do. You wish for a short example? Let's think about the lists, okay? We want to receive the first element and the last element. How can we do that? Well, thanks to pattern matching, what we can do is we say we get a variable of a list. We say inside of it that we want to a variable A declared. Dot, dot, dot means everything in between, comma B. And now we say we want to pass that into that array. Now, if we print A and B, we can see the output will be zero and 5002342, which is the last element. Isn't it great? That's fantastic. And this de deconstruction goes even further. So let's assume we don't want to get the last element, but the element before the last one. And now what we can do is we just say a comma dot 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 comma b comma underscore, because we don't want the last element. And now we get back our zero and 190. I know all of that doesn't sound too exciting, but it's it, it really is. A lot of things are getting now way easier. We don't have to access so many things. And yeah, that's pretty cool. I really like them. I really look forward to use them more in my projects and I cannot wait what you are doing with it. But there is a downside that I should not uh, forget. Um, Pascal Welch actually made me aware of it. Uh, he made a fantastic talk about records and patterns on the Fluttercon 2023. And I highly recommend you to check out as soon as the videos are out because records are immutable. 
As a package maintainer, you should be super careful what you are exposing to other APIs. Because they are not extendable like classes or changeable of the names or things like that. So whatever you change in a record that you pass out into another API, like you return something or anything that another API will use, you cannot extend it, you cannot change the name, you cannot do anything. This record needs to stay like it is. If you change anything at it, then it is a breaking change of your API and um, someone who consumes your package has to do something to use your package again. So just keep that in mind. It will be a major version jump then. All right. So that was my first initial idea of um, records and patterns. And I really hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. So if you like to see more Dart and Flutter related uh, topics, please check out our channel, hit the like button and subscribe to it. That would be fantastic. If you like live streaming, well, I'm working currently on a Flutter Go and uh, yeah, Joe server, a full stack application. And we are working that on kick.com or on Monday, Tuesday and Friday here on Flutter Explained. All right, can't wait to see you there. And if that was not good enough for you and you want to learn more and you think, ah, this is a good start, but what is next? What should I learn? I would recommend you check out the CICD um, with Code Magic video that I produced here, where you will learn all kinds of things about CICD, how to use it with YAML and all the cool things. So check that out and I will see you there. Bye.